Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Battle Brothers. Battle Brothers is a really cool game that can be best summarized as a low fantasy medieval RPG slash turn-based strategy game in which you take command of a group of mercenaries and you try to make them most of the time survive but also maybe live a bit of a luxurious life and to lead them on their way to fame. Now the game is really brutal, really bloody and really cool, which is all the reasons why I decided that I will bring it to you. I could spend a lot of time talking about it, but you guys know that uh, the best way how to explain a game is playing it, so I'm gonna do just that right now. But fair warning, this will be the episode one, and in that one I will set up all the things and explain so you can follow my progress in the next episode. So if you are uh, familiar with this game, feel free to skip through the episode and maybe even watch the second one if you can uh, see, you know, uh, if you can understand what I do from uh, just the title menu. So we're gonna play a new campaign. There's a number of ways how you can start the game. These are all preset, uh, but on a very, very uh, mildly scripted starts, uh, each giving you a wide variety of, uh, you know, plethora of, of starting, uh, starting setups. First of all, it's the rebuilding of a company, which is sort of a tutorial uh, way how to play the game. Uh, that one is the most scripted. Then there's a new company, which is a few guys just get together and decide that uh, they will go to glory. Then there's the peasant militia. Um, you start as a ragtag militia, made up of anyone brave or desperate enough to volunteer for defending their homes. Uh, or you can start as a band of poachers, where it starts to get a bit harder. You can see the skulls up here, which show you how difficult the start is. So the band of poachers is pretty much the same as peasant militia, but you are poachers. Then there's the trading caravan turned mercenary group, which can be really interesting. Then there are the beast slayers, which are really cool, I think. Then there's the deserters from the army who have decided to start their own mercenary group. Then there's a really fun one called the Daku cultists, uh, who pretty much uh, worship a dark god and need to sacrifice people to him. Um, might be fun to try. Then there's the Northern Raiders who are bored of pillaging and killing people and instead decided to steal their money by serving them, which is <laughs> kind of interesting. And then there's the one that we are going to play, the Lone Wolf. The Lone Wolf is the only starting campaign, uh, or only start in the campaign, which has three skulls. It is actually really unique and really fun in a number of ways. First of all, this is the only one in which you start with only one character. Second of all, uh, this is the only one in which you have a main character. There's an avatar which is the starting character and when he dies, it is over for you. So that's really cool. Uh, and as I intend this Let's Play to be pretty much a representation of my channel, taking you guys uh, as my friends on the way, I think this will be really cool. So, you have been oh you have been traveling alone for a long time, taking part in tourneys and sparing with young nobles. A hedge knight tall as a tree, you never needed anybody for long. Is it true still? Lone Wolf, start with a single experience hedge knight and a great equipment, but low funds. Elite few, you can never have more than 12 men in your roster. And Avatar, if your hedge knight dies, the campaign ends. So this is pretty much what I was trying to explain. I really like this, uh, really like this idea, but I'm not gonna lie, this is insanely hard. Uh, even rebuilding a new company is hard and you start with three people and in this game one character is cool He has good equipment and everything, but you can't really beat Beat the game with one character. It's it's insane and it's really hard to find good characters on your way So this is going to be a huge struggle from the very very beginning Now uh, we are gonna call our company the dark crow 
And we are going to take a banner of... A Dark Crow. Now, there's a late game crisis. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on random because uh, what happens is that if you play the game for long enough, you should have all of them. Then there's the permanent destruction, which means that uh, cities can get destroyed, villages can get uh, burned down. So we're gonna keep that on. And the map seed, um, I was thinking about a cool map seed, but I'm just gonna call this... What are we going to call this? Dark Crow. Dark Crow. We're gonna use the map, see the Dark Crow. And next. This is where uh, the difficulties are set. We are going to go with economic difficulty, which is uh, expert. We're gonna go with combat difficulty of expert. And then there's the starting funds. Well, the starting funds are a really interesting choice. Usually I would go with low. But high, in this case, is lower than low in many other starting settings. It's really poor. And the only thing that this would do to us is, if I chose low, I would have to spend more time roaming around alone and hoping that something awful won't slaughter me. So I'm just gonna go with high. Uh, to those of you that, that think this is this is a bad choice, trust me, uh, by high you get maybe two contracts worth of money, maybe less. So this is really not, not it's it's not even, the, the difference is not even one sword, you know, so uh, this is really just, just a little thing. And I would like to play on Iron Man, but... The game is honestly still in development, so I'm just not gonna play Iron Man in case it crashes. I will only save between episodes and uh, we're gonna just go with whatever happens to us. Uh, this is a brutal game, there's no need to be afraid that there won't be enough failures to go around. Uh, so we're gonna play like an Iron Man without the actual necessity to uh, face a corrupted save file. So, I'm gonna start the game. And we're gonna see how the map will look like in just a second. Now I'm really excited about this playthrough because I've been wanting to do it since I bought the game, which is a couple days ago, and I just couldn't get around to uh, playing it. I played for about an hour and a half maybe, and now we are here together, so trust me, I'm a really big noob. So the Lone Wolf. You walk the stands of a jousting arena. Moldy fruits and vegetables litter the floor. Dried blood freckles the seats, and silence fills the air. When you sit, the wood of the place seems to groan in unison, as though discomfited by the haunt of a rare visitor. In your hands is a note, looking for a hardy man, knowledge of the sort preferred but all welcome. It is an old note, its purpose long since served. But what draws your eyes is the price offered to the task, more crowns that you could muster in five tournaments. If this is the coin to be earned, then to hell with the jousts and the sparing. But you're not one to suit up for some other captain's orders. With all that you've earned over the years, you imagine you could start your own mercenary band just fine. Well, one more reason to take high funds, because even with the high funds we still don't have enough to start a mercenary company alone. And that's what I'll do. So here we are in the game. This little character represents us. This is the strategy map. And wow, this is interesting. We started at the very south of the game. The north has a faction here. You can see the flags. These are all settlements. Then there's a little faction here in the middle. And then there's a faction of only two cities. Uh, Sandstadt and Helen's Fest here. That's interesting. So we started at the very south at the weakest of uh, the houses. We can check the houses here. There's three of them. House Goswin, which is at the north. Then House Rabenhold, which is the middle one. And House Horn, which is the southern one. Really interesting how disproportionate this is. Oh, that's really cool. I've never seen that before. 
Well, we're gonna move around the map and then visit the cities as time goes by, but as I mentioned, this is the first episode, so I'm gonna explain a bit about the game before we actually go ahead and play it. So, uh, here on the top left corner, you can see our uh, things. We have 1,150 crowns worth of money. Uh, we're currently not paying anyone, but if we get uh, allies, mercenaries, we are going to have to pay them. Then there's food, we need food to eat, to heal and to enjoy ourselves. We have 25 provisions and we eat 4 per day. So we have for about 6 more days. We have tools and supplies, 20 of them, which are used to repair equipment and equipment to loot from people. We have no ammunition because we're a uh, um, hedge knight, we have no bow. And we have 10 medical supplies which are used to uh, heal injuries. This game is really cool in the fact that you can lose a hand, eye, you can bleed, have broken ribs, whatever happens in combat uh, happens to you, so you need these very often. Uh, we have no ambition currently. Up here, you on the top right corner, you can see there's our roster. Here's the center camera on our character. Uh, there's the look camera and some other things. We can uh, go into camp. Here are the relations. And here's the obituary where we will have all of our fallen comrades. Day one is now. It's dawn, so very early morning. And this is the only city... Uh, that we have in our reach, which, which is Helenfeste. Before we go there, I'm gonna show you the character screen and explain a bit more about it. So, this is our character. He's not gonna be named Eugene, he's gonna be named Calvin. He's the lone wolf. Uh, we're gonna call it uh, Leader of Crows. And uh, he is level 4. Now, here are the stats that we have. We have 210 head armor. We have a really good bassinet with male helmet, which is really interesting. But you can see that it gives us penalties to fatigue and vision. I'm going to explain that in a second. We have a body armor called Cell Swords Armor, a long leather coat reinforced with metal plates worn over a sturdy male hauberk. A very nice one. You can see that it cost actually quite a lot, four and a half thousand. But if you wanted to sell that, we would get barely one third, maybe even less. However, again, notice the maximum fatigue minus 32. And then we have a massive long sword, a two handed sword. Long two-handed blade that makes for a versatile weapon. A very good weapon, making quite a lot of damage, 65 to 85. 35% of the damage ignores armor, 100% effective against armor, and it does a lot of uh, shield damage, and we have a bonus to hit head with it of 5%. Now, here are the traits of our character. Uh, so we uh, have a background of a hedge knight. A wandering hedge knight, you were a veteran of jousting and sparring tournaments. You were also a veteran of victory. It is a scary thought for many, but if it were anything at all that turned your eye towards mercenary work, it was boredom. Outwardly, you state it is for the coin, but a part of you knows it's also for the company. Uh, our character is a player character. This is your player character, or in other words, yourself. If he dies, your campaign ends. You can dismiss him and he'll never desert you. So we get plus 10 resolve from that. And we are gluttonous. Tasty, let's have another one. Better bring extra provisions when traveling with this character and expect them to be fast if you ever run out of provisions entirely. Oh my god, we're not really starting well. We are glutton and we are fat. So that gives us extra 10 hit points, but minus 10 maximum fatigue. This is really shitty, honestly. <laughs> this character is more interested in pork chops than exercising and will run out of breath more easily. Wow, this is really not a good start, but what can we do? It's us, so that's what we're gonna deal with. We're content, 43%. Uh, these are the attacks that we can do in the battle. We can do an overhead strike, we can split someone, uh, we can swing at someone, and we can split someone's shield, or we can try to. Uh, as I mentioned, here's the held armor and body armor. Here we have our hit points, it's 83, which is probably good from having 10 extra hit points from the fat. 
Uh, here's our action points. This, uh, this is the movement in the game. So if you notice, any attack we do cost six action points, so we can pretty much attack only once per turn. Uh, this below is a fatigue. We have only three, uh, 43 points of fatigue. If I take away the armor, you will notice that it goes up. Our fatigue is greatly reduced due to the fact that we were wearing this much stuff on ourselves. Uh, but as you can see the stars here, it means that this is one of our uh, prestige skills, or I don't know how to explain it. It's um, We're always gonna get, when leveling up, quite a lot of bonuses to this. So it should improve rapidly. Our character morale is steady. And here's the resolve. Uh, resolve is what your character uh, rolls against in battle. If we see our allies dying, take uh, damage, get surrounded or anything, it will drop and our character can start uh, breaking and running away, which is really bad news. Then there's initiative, uh, which is really poor for the four, so most of the characters that we'll see will go uh, ahead of us. But again, this is greatly reduced by the armor that we're wearing, so uh, because it is, I think it's directly connected to fatigue. So the more fatigue you have, the better initiative. So our character is basically a lumbering hulk with massive damage dealing potential. Now here you can see the melee skill. This is how well we build um, melee weapons. This is ranged skill. We have actually quite high range skill. We could maybe wield a bow as well. This is the melee defense. Uh, as you can see, we have two stars there, so we can improve it greatly. This is what you roll against the melee skill. In a very short uh, explanation, uh, when I attack someone, I have 63% chance minus his melee defense to hit him. Uh, there's also a lot of bonuses like surrounded, the height uh, differences, if you're higher or lower, if, whether it's day or night, uh, what's your morale and stuff like that. But, you know, very simplified, it works like this. And then there's the range skill. We have zero uh, ranged defense, so again, this would be compared to enemy if you shot a bow against him. Now this is our damage, 65 to 85, that's very decent. And then there's the effectiveness against armor, you saw that on our sword. Uh, the chance to hit head and the vision. So you can see it's very detailed. Now, we're gonna level up our character. This is gonna be the last thing that we do in this episode before we start the next one and go on an adventure. So when you level up your character, you click on the level and the game automatically rolls thing for you based on your skill. You can't really do anything uh, apart from that. You, the only thing you can do is choose uh, attribute points. So we can choose, for example, to improve hit points, melee and fatigue or stuff like that. You know, you, you need to decide. At this point, I'm definitely gonna improve melee skill and our fatigue because we need more points in fatigue. We have only 43, but the rest is fairly, fairly not good. I would maybe like to improve resolved or the melee defense. As we have nothing in Resolve, no stars, I think I'm gonna go with Resolve this time because this is more important. We'll probably get more than plus three in the melee defense next level up. So let's confirm it and go again. Yeah, see, it's different. So we're gonna again improve our melee skill and I want to improve our fatigue as well. But we have resolve on a plus two and melee defense plus three. So let's go like that. And we have one more level up to choose from. Okay, again, melee skill, again fatigue. And I think, well, resolve is very poor here. I don't like how poor it is. But I think we need melee defense more, so let's do this. And apart from this, every level you get an extra perk. Now, uh, we have a number of perks here that are fairly good. We could, I'm gonna quickly go through them to explain some of them and show you which ones I like. So there's a fast adaptation which gives you a bonus to hit every time you miss. 
Uh, there's crippling strikes, it gives you more chance to uh, break legs or hands or bones or whatever when you attack your enemies. There's Colossus which gives 25% boost to your hit points, very good one. And also it reduces the chance to sustain debilitating injuries. Uh, there's Nine Wives. Once per battle, upon receiving a killing blow, survive instead with a few hit points left. The next bit is Waiko to kill you for good, of course, which is something that we will definitely take for our character as we go uh, for, the, for the adventure. There's Bags and Belts, which gives you a bit of carrying capacity. Pathfinder gives you extra movement points. Adrenaline uh, makes you attack earlier in the next round. Recover, which gives you uh, ability to reduce fatigue by 50%. And then there's Student, which gives you 20% extra experience from battle. Now I'm gonna go with Colossus on this one because we need hit points. This is our main character and we also don't want critical hits to kill us immediately. So we can see we now have 103 hit points and the new perks unlocked. There's Executioner, additional 20% against uh, any enemy that has sustained injury effects. There's Bullseye, which is good for the Archer, increases uh, or decreases the penalty for ranged attacks. There's Dodge, gives you 15% of the character's current initiative as a bonus to melee and range defense. That is really good, but our initiative is only 34, so at this point we would get like three or four. I don't think that's really worth it at this point. Fortified Mind is really good, gives you a bonus to resolve. That one is very useful. Resilient lowers the time that you're bleeding and, you know, I don't know, being charmed. I don't even know if what would charm you, but still. There's Steel Brow, which removes the possibility to get one-shotted by critical hits to your head. So that's the one that I'm gonna take now. Uh, there's also Quick Hands, which allows you to swap items. Very good, for example, for archers or, uh, you know, I would say characters that have more than one good skill. You can make archers uh, take out shield and um, sword if they get surrounded. And Gifted gives you a level up that increases this character's attributes with maximum rolls, but without talents. I'm actually torn about taking this one. I'm not sure about the last one. Uh, we have a couple extra things here. Backstabber, uh, Anticipation, which gives you extra range defense. Shield Expert would be great, but we don't use shields. Brawny lowers initiative penalty from wearing... Uh, fatigue and initiative penalty from wearing armor and helmet. Relentless gives you extra initiative. Rotation, good for groups. Rally the troops is also good and taunt. Now I'm torn between... Brawny and Gifted. You know what, I think we're gonna go with Brawny because that reduces our penalty to fatigue and initiative by additional 25%. So, this is our initiative 34 and this is our fatigue 57. And when we take it, we have 69 and 46. Yeah, that is definitely worth it. So, uh, this is a setup for our character. As I said, uh, we're only a level 4. Uh, this is really not that hard. You can go through a couple of battles and have a level 4 character. The biggest boost to us is the equipment, which is very good, but it won't save us for long. So in the next episode, we are going to start wandering around the world and see if we can find some easy jobs to do and accumulate enough money and loot to actually hire some people. So I'll see you in the next episode.